tuned in to Kano's Corner, and perhaps I was a little bit wrong. The interview was at one, not two. So it's happening right now. Right now, we have a special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. My name is Juliet Cesario, and I'm happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you here. And this is kind of a nostalgia trip for me. And I, I wanted to say this <laughs> because my first ever DVD that I bought, my first anime DVD, was the All My Goddess series. What? Oh, that's great. That's a good one to start with. It was. I loved it so much. And at the time, you know, anime really wasn't so much on TV. So I had to watch the same DVD over and over and over again. <laughs> so I got very accustomed to you as Bill Dandy. You probably know it about as well as I do then. Good. <laughs> How did you exactly, you know, find yourself in such a, such a role out of curiosity? Well, I was so lucky with Bell Dandy. I, I mean, I, I still think of it as one of the best things I've ever been fortunate enough to do. Um, but I had been auditioning for anime at that point for about a year, and I had done a couple things with a, a different company at that time just to kind of get my feet wet. And then I had an audition for Bell Dandy, and had a, you go through the first audition and then a callback, and I could not believe I got the part. I was so excited. So that was a really good a really good experience, a great time for me. And before that, I had been doing live action and theater and a lot of different things leading up to it. So, But I knew that voice acting was something I'd always wanted to do. So I was really lucky. And now, before that, actually, if I remember correctly, was like AD Police File. Yes, that was actually my very first foray into anime. And that was with um, a dear friend of mine, Mike Center Nicholas, who was directing it. And I had worked with him in the theater, and he had asked me to audition. So I did AD Police was the first one I did. And then I did a couple little things for him, like background stuff and Bubblegum Crisis. So Bell Dandy was really my first big audition, and it was with a whole new company and director. It was at Coastal Studios with Scott Houle, who I just think is amazing. So it was just an, it was an incredible experience. And now that you've gone from between theater and voice acting work, would you say you have a preference or are they both have their own qualities? <laughs> well, I always say as an actor, you really need to be as versatile as possible if you want to make a living doing it. Because there's, you know, you've just got to be able to do all of it. So I've done, I started in theater and my first big TV job was actually on Star Trek The Next Generation quite a while ago, but really fun. I was a huge fan. So from there, I did a lot of TV and small films. So you really just have to keep yourself as busy as possible if you want to be in this business. I think it's good to be versatile. Very cool. And I know a lot of our Trekkies will be interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the coolest experience. I worked on it for two seasons. So it was just, it was really, really fun. I still can't believe when I see my younger self in that uniform. I think it's so cool. <laughs> But that's very neat. And I actually, now I want to look it up, but I'll wait until after the interview. <laughs> you can see it on my website. <laughs> oh, okay. That's awesome. And now with Oh My Goddess, I always wanted to ask because throughout the years that I watched it, I was, I always noticed between Keiichi and your character, Bell Dandy, that mm -hmm. there was such a chemistry. Do you think it mm -hmm. helped that you sort of knew, Scott? Definitely. I mean, we... We had worked together quite a bit before in a lot of different theater productions. We've done a couple films together. So just having that relationship and that closeness made a huge difference. Even going into the audition, um, I didn't get to hear his audition, but I just had him in my mind. So even that helped. But yeah, to get to work on the whole show together like that made it, it was awesome. Especially having the relationship that we had. It, it just made the character so much more fun to play. and different mm -hmm. and she was a very innocent and now in terms of modernization she's considered an almost domestic and a, and some people even <laughs> consider bell dandy a, like a sexist stereotype would you oh. agree with that or would you counter argue that well because i feel you know i lived with her for for such a long time i know she's a powerful goddess so I dealt with a lot of that when I was doing it and when I went to a lot of conventions early on, people would ask me about that. Um, but, you know, I like to cook and I like to clean the house, but I'm also a very independent and, you know, strong woman. And I feel the same way about her, let alone forget about all her super cool powers. You know, she's she can do anything. So 
I think she's got a nice balance there and she just fell in love. And when you're in love, you just want to do everything you can for that person. Oh, that was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it, all, it almost sounded like she was saying it too. <laughs> I do love her. And it's been so fun to, to get to play Payorth now after her being Belle Dandy. Now I've been working on the new TV series that says Payorth, who's completely different. So I feel like I've, as I've gotten older, I feel like I've kind of graduated into this, you know, sexy older character. I was going to ask, I'm, I'm pretty sure that two different studios handled the dubbing between the OVA, the, the movie, yeah. the TV series, so you kind of did probably didn't get a chance to act any of those, I'm assuming. Exactly, and it's, you know, as an actor, I would love to play Belle Dandy in every single incarnation that there is, but it depends on where it's done, who's doing it, you know, who the production company is, and the dubbing studio both. So I didn't get to work on a lot of them, but to be able to go back with a different studio and a different director, um, for that one I get to go up to New York and, and work in the studio up there, it's just been a really fulfilling experience and kind of full circle for me, because it's, it's hard to let go of a character, but you know, a lot of actors will do that, and different actors will play different parts. I got to do that with You're Under Arrest. I took over the part of Miyuki from the original actress. So I feel like it kind of, it works both ways. Sometimes you're lucky, and, and sometimes it happens far away, and you don't get to be a part of it. Right, I can understand. But at least you're still in the franchise, though, as Payorth, and you said that she's a very different character. Was it kind of weird when you had to ever interact with Belle Dandy in a scene? <laughs> It was different. Yeah. At first, I really had to get used to that. But I love what she does. I, I think it's, is it Eileen Stevens who does it in New York? I, she's wonderful. I, I loved what she did with the character. I got to meet her. We got to do some DVD commentary together. So it was really fun. And I have to say, when Payorth has a few scenes where she's really trying to get El Dandy and Keiichi together, I just would tear up every time I would get all teary in the studio because I felt like, oh, good, now Kay Orth has something to do with getting them together and getting them to admit they love each other. And it, it was it was really cool. Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> I love that series. It's so romancy cuteness all the way. It, it, yeah, and there's not a lot of that out there, you know, so it just it always makes you feel good. And it's funny. Yes, that too. <laughs> you just throw Erd in there, and then it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I love her, yeah. But it's been fun to see the different incarnations of Oh My Goddess, and I think it's such a great, great story, and the characters are so wonderful that just the more we have, the better is how I feel about it. Very cool. And do you think, uh, I know that there's the second season, but there was also a special, and I'm unaware if they released that in the U.S. Do you know anything about that? I don't know. I know that there was the movie and I think some specials that they did in California with a completely different set of actors, but that's as far as I know. I'm, I'm not really clear. Oh, it's okay. It, it happens all the time. They're like, they never hey, we're going to do this. Oh, yeah, they do and they don't tell the actors, so we're, we're the last to know. <laughs> you have to be reminded in like interviews and things like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? No, I'll have to look for that one myself as a fan. All right, awesome. Well, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk even more. So stay tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Ever wonder what's going on in the anime world? Check out 91.8 The Fan every weekday for the newest eye stock. We'll fill you in on everything you need to know in three minutes or less, only on 918thefan.com. Hey, we're back to Kana's Corner on 91.8 The Fan, and as I said, I have a special guest with me. If you don't know, why don't you pay attention to my show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen, and, listen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've actually wanted to ask you, you just recently, from what I know, were in Clamp School Detectives, weren't you? Yes. That was a great show. That was one of my, my favorites. Have you seen it? I haven't gotten a chance to yet, which is sad. <laughs> That's okay. It's a great show, though. Yeah, and I just played Kaicho in Clam School Detectives. I think it was 26 episodes, and it's a great show. It's just so funny and a really awesome cast. And it was the first time I've ever played a boy, so it was pretty cool for me. Did you have to do some sort of a deep, gurgly voice, or <laughs> were they he feminine enough? <laughs> Well, feminine enough, you know, they're really young, and he was just really excited all the time, and like, hey guys, what's up? You know, just very high energy, and really almost 
borderline hyper at times. And it was just so fun to get to play an eight-year-old boy. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure that actually just came out. I think it was February 3rd. I I think it came out last year. They might have put like the second half out. Maybe they did it in a couple different parts. But it was originally, I thought it was released last year. I could be wrong. Oh, I'm just going off of IMDb. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, it came out last February. That's what it was. All right. It's so. been out just now a year. Very cool. And we and I will point to everybody where you can pick that up. We will post it in the archived interview because you should buy it. I mean, you should. You'll love it. You'll love it. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the story? Um, yeah, yeah, Clamp School's great. It's a, it's about a group of boys, um, that go to this amazing private school. You see it, and it's the kind of school we all wish we could have gone to. Um, Kaicho's father and family own the school, so it's a huge campus, and they have kids there from kindergarten all the way through college. And, you know, hijinks ensue, and so the guys have to get together, and they create a detective club, and so they're, they're little sleuths. They're out solving crimes each week. Now, do you think that uh, you'll sort of get back into anime? Because I know you've kind of more or less gone more into live action lately. Do you think that this is kind of a period where you can uh, go back? I would love to. I mean, I would do anime every day if I could. Um, right now, it's not happening as much where I'm living. So I'm actually getting ready to move back out to the West Coast so that I can do more of it. So I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, and as an actor, you've got to sadly go where there's you know where that where it pays so you can pay your rent a little more so i've been um i've just had a part on the tv show one tree hill on the cw network and i i was in four episodes of that playing um a, a mom it was really fun so that kind of pays the rent so that you can spend the rest of your time doing voice acting which is what i would love to do very cool maybe we can have a west coast party <laughs> absolutely I'll, I'll drive through and come see you <laughs> very neat and now you're I'm, I'm assuming somewhere in california since it's like california texas canada or new york we're like the big central places and yes. now do, do you think in your experience have you ever done anywhere else out of those places well like i said i i it, it used to happen a lot here in North Carolina. We had a few studios where I'm living right now. Um, so it was great to get to be so busy with it. And we actually just worked on a show a couple months back um, that I, I can't really talk about, I don't think, yet. Because we're not sure if it's going to go through or not. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But it's been great to be able to go up to New York. So I've been doing a lot of work on this East Coast with the anime. And I'm anxious to get out to the West Coast and see how things are out there. Well, very cool. And hopefully, you know, we can see you at conventions and more active, too, because you kind of were a part of the, in, in my opinion, sort of the part of the beginning of dubbing in a way when it was starting to get ready for the boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of just uh, getting really hot there at, at the first. And um, yeah, I went to a lot of conventions right after I did Oh My Goddess. And I still do. Um, I don't go to as many. I just went to Matsuri Con in Ohio, and that was really great. Um, but I hope to do a lot more, especially when I'm out on the West Coast. Hopefully I'll get to go to some more conventions. But I love going. I love meeting fans. I love meeting other voice actors and learning about new projects. And, and just show, as a fan myself, I just like to hear what's going on and what the, the new shows are that everybody's excited about. Do you have any funny convention stories out of curiosity? <laughs> well, there's so many great, funny people at conventions, and I'm sure you know, too, like Steve Bennett is always a hoot. I love to hang out with Steve. Um, I got to meet some great actors at Missouri Con that I'd never met before, Caitlin Glass, Stephanie, Trevor McDevitt, heard of them all. Um, so some, some great actors. It's been really fun just to get to meet them and hear their stories. Very neat. And do you have any conventions planned for coming up, or is it still... Kind of. Not yet. Uh, it's kind of all up in the air. I would love to go. So if anybody would like to invite me, feel free. Um, but right now I'm just sort of busy um, wrapping up some of the work I'm doing and getting ready to move. And is there any other projects that you have coming up that you're allowed to talk about or not really? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just did a, it was like a spec couple of episodes for Bandai and I'm really hoping they pick it up because it would be a lot of fun. Um, but I always put everything that I'm, that I'm doing on my website, which is just julietcesario.com. You can always find me on Twitter or Facebook. And I just try to keep everybody updated through those means as to what's happening. I've had a lot of auditions this week, so you just never know. As an actor, it's always 
It's like a roller coaster. See, I didn't know you had a Twitter. Now I have to stalk you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Please do. I'm pretty new to it, so be patient with me. <laughs> it's the biggest the social boom that I can think of. Like people are all like, Facebook is so awesome, and I can Facebook confuses me. So <laughs> I like Twitter. It's simple and easy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's a lot of fun. It's so fun to follow different people and see what they're up to. So yeah, I'm a huge fan. And is there anything else you want to promote? I wish there was, but I will definitely say please see Clamp School Detectives because the last con that I went to, I didn't even get to meet anyone who had seen it. So I really hope people watch it because it's a great series. It's a really fun show. And if you like You're Under Arrest or Oh My Goddess, it's the kind of show that you would love. Now, You're Under Arrest, everybody's recommended that to me because from what I know, it's by the same creator as Oh My Goddess. Yes. Have you not seen it? I haven't. I, I'm been really bad with anime lately because uh i've been busy with this (laughs) i think you'll like it because it is the same creator as oh my goddess so the artwork is beautiful the stories and the characters are amazing and i was a huge fan of it before i even got cast because they had already done i think the first five episodes with another actress she then moved away so by the time they got the rest of the series they couldn't use her so i felt really fortunate to step into that role and it's a really fun series You'll love it. Now, out of curiosity, do you, do you go out and do you buy, uh, buy this anime and do you watch it? Or are you kind of just stuck in the, the watching it through when you're dubbing it? <laughs> well, people always ask me, you know, what's your favorite anime? And I always say it's the one I'm working on right now because that's usually the one I'm watching a lot of. So the directors and the producer, they'll give you the originals. So we watch the original Japanese version as our homework constantly. I I don't know if everybody works that way, but I need to. I I love to watch the original. I love to see what the actress is doing with the part. It really helps inform what what I want to do with it. And that, you know, do you think that affects your performance? Absolutely. Especially with something like uh, a character like Belle Dandy. I I thought, I mean, Inoue is amazing and there's a lot of vocal inflections she does that I, I was so in awe of. I really tried to emulate some of those as close as I can, you know, some of the incidental breaths that she does. And then I got to meet her at a convention a couple years ago, and it was, you know, a dream come true. Oh, wow, so that was, must have been pretty amazing. It was so cool. It was at an amazement, and they had her come out, and they had me come out. And just to get to be together and do panels together and take pictures was so exciting for me. I was such a fangirl. I was very excited. Was there, like, a language barrier there? Did she have a translator with her? She had a translator with her who was wonderful. And we we just sat and talked about the character and what it was like to play her. And she was just really open and everything you would want Belle Dandy to be. <laughs> she did not disappoint. That is so cool. I mean, I, I it's so rare that I get to hear like voice actors actually meeting their Japanese counterpart like that. Mm-hmm. I Well, it's something I'd wanted to do for years, and so I couldn't believe when I got that call that they wanted to bring us both out. I just felt really lucky because you're right. It's really rare. It's never happened before for me. So, And she was my idol, so to get to meet her was super cool. Very awesome and very neat. And I think, sadly, that our interview might be coming to a close. Oh, I had such a wonderful time talking with you, Jackie. Thank you. I enjoyed talking with you, too. But before I ask you to leave, which I don't want to, could you (laughs) participate in a 91.8 fan tradition? I would love to. What is it? We were wondering if you would do a bump for us. Sure. We were wondering if you could say, my name is, insert here, and I did this, insert here, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. I can type it to you if you need me to. I'm writing it down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Right now? Uh, yeah, and that's the funny part. If you, if you <laughs> screw up, everybody can laugh at you. <laughs> oh, good, oh, good. Absolutely. <laughs> my name is Juliet Cesario, and I played Belle Dandy in an Oh My Goddess, and you are turned into, you are tuned into 981.8 The Fan. Yay, thank you. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> A little bobble there, but. <laughs> it's okay. We can edit that. We have technical people in the background (laughs) i love technical people i know they fix all the mistakes oh they make you sound good (laughs) but no i really appreciate it and as i said this will be up on the site later and then we will totally send you a message great thank you i appreciate it no problem and once again thank you and stay tuned to 91.8 fan everything you want to hear and nothing you don't all right (laughs) yay that was great